What's happening, Shredder Nation? Happy Tuesday. Welcome to episode number 63 uh, of Shred Your Body. I'm your host, Jesse James Jimnick, ER Shred Ambassador, ER Shred Health Coach, uh, and I'm I'm really jacked to be here tonight. I'm I'm excited every single week. Um, but you know, one of the one of the best things that we've gotten to experience over the last year plus, year and a half, going oh, we're we're kind of going into the you know the the, the stretch of, of one year, one and a half years, I think, if I'm doing my math right. Anyway, it's been a long day. But, um, you know, one of the coolest things that we've been able to witness and see, what's up, Rike, um, is people being able to reclaim their birthright of amazing health. Uh, we've been able to see people up level their life in every aspect um, from being a better parent to being a better caregiver to being a better spouse to more most importantly being better to themselves you know we believe that every single person deserves amazing health we believe everybody should have amazing health uh, and we don't believe it should be complicated uh, we believe in supporting everybody we believe in uplifting everybody we believe in um, you know giving people the tracks to run on and then guiding you know walking that path with you helping you guiding you but ultimately um, leading you on a self-discovery so you can come alive and really, that's what I love to do every single Tuesday when we do these stories where we get to dive deep. We get to see, uh, you know, hear from people that have been through the ER shred. They've had radical transformations physically, mentally. It's changed their life. And it's just so awesome to, um, you know, provide this for people. Uh, everybody deserves to share their story. Everybody deserves to be celebrated. Everybody deserves that. I just fully believe that. So I love, I'm so grateful that I get to do that every single Tuesday. So so without further ado, uh, my guest tonight is uh, from, you know, from what I know, so I don't know him personally, um, but for, we chatted a little bit. We got to see what's up, Brent, what's up, Lenny. Um, and, you know, just from his bio alone, um, he sounds like one amazing dude. So I'm really, really excited for tonight to kind of learn more about him. But Mr. Tim Scott, hey, Jason, welcome to you? my welcome to my call, my friend. I really, truly appreciate you for being here tonight. Well, thank you for uh, inviting me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, man. Well, listen, I couldn't, I couldn't deny, um, you know, you came on a Wednesday call, uh, which is awesome. You know, that's kind of like what we call the rite of passage, right? Like you, you, you become your own hero. Um, you step up, you raise your hand, you say yes. And then boom, you have this amazing transformation and you come on, you got all this energy and I'm just like drawn to the, you know, I'm drawn to the why, Tim, as a health coach, I kind of want to, you know, figure out why, where we got, you know, how we got here, why we got there, why we were able to change, all that kind of good stuff. So you game for all that tonight? Yeah, I'm ready to go. Okay, so let's start basic because I don't, I don't know you besides obviously from our ER Shred community, which is awesome because this is one of my favorite parts, bro, is, is I get to meet amazing people and literally – build you know what i mean a framework of just awesome friends because they're awesome people which has been really really cool so i'm excited so we're first off i guess where are you from uh where are you originally from where do you live now kind of tell us a little bit about you your family i know you got your wife and your kids so um tell us tell us a little bit about tim scott i uh i live in billings montana i was born in billings okay. montana i've lived here in the in the county virtually all of my life minus about uh 45 days i moved to a small town in wyoming for a short while uh, i moved there because i started working for bnsf railway and okay. um i had funny story about getting that job is i i weighed about 265 pounds and i went and i took a strength test for them and the the job i had prior to that i worked for a pepsi cola bottling here in billings and yeah. I was the guy that moved vending machines and coolers. And I, if they needed something heavy moved, I was one of the guys they grabbed, you're you know, the man. And, and I took this strength test and they said, you're not strong enough to come work for the railroad. And I was like, you're kidding, right? I mean, you want to wrestle? Cause I, I mean, I'll show you how <laughs> I'm just, I've never been a guy that you put me on a weight bench. I just, I, it's just not a thing that I can do. I just, yeah, I just man. can't do it. But but real life application, it's that old man strength type of thing, you know, it's 
when I need to lift something heavy, I can lift something heavy, but you put me on a bench, I couldn't I couldn't probably bench the bar ten times just because yeah. it's something I don't have to do. And and so I was just I was devastated by that that they told yeah. me I wasn't strong enough. And I I he went to the gym, I started dieting and I was working out seven days a week and I got down to two oh five and I was fit and I got that job. It took me about six months of uh, you know, mm -hmm. waiting for a next opening and, and I got that job and I had to move to Wyoming and and so for uh six years I did that and I every day I had a shovel in my hand and I was digging in that ballast along the railroad tracks, burying burying track wires and cables under yeah. that rock and, and I, yeah. I wasn't I wasn't uh skinny but i was in good shape my back was really mm -hmm. strong my arms and legs were strong because i was doing some pretty physical labor um for sure i my son at the time my son was about six months old and he my wife took him in for a six, six month checkup and uh she calls me i would just flown out to washington state i was in the uh everett area and she says hey quinn just got admitted to the hospital and i said what and she mm -hmm. says yeah his they did, they, they did, you know, they put the stethoscope on him to listen to a breathing. They said that it sounded like they could hear a crackle. So they wanted to take an x-ray and his left lung, left lung was entirely collapsed and his right lung was partially collapsed. No, the kid never had a fever. He never acted sick. Wow. He was just this happy baby that was just yeah. very active. And so I was one of those, was one of those things where I got to get off the road. I mean, I, I can't be a third of the way across the country when my son is in the hospital. Mm. So Fast forward, I, I take a couple of different jobs and now I work for a company called Lindy and I, I manage and operate a, a, ni a small nitrogen production plant and I separate the nitrogen out from the atmospheric air that we all breathe and I purify it and I pump it into a, a oil and gas refinery here in Billings so that they can use that gas, that inert gas to prevent explosions from happening basically and to purge equipment that they need to work on. So it's a uh, it, it's it's one of those jobs where I love it because it's a challenge for my brain, but I yeah. definitely have lost, I've definitely lost that um, physical working hard every day. And uh, I've been doing this since 2014 now, and, and it really has caught up to me these last, these last two mm. years, especially. So I hit 313 pounds October. I, my friend, Mike Hass, he's, posted a thing he's my son's hockey coach he said hey yeah i've done this thread a couple times you know anybody want to join me these are my results and i, I always thought mm -hmm. mike was a pretty fit guy anyways but i looked at his pictures yeah. and like all of a sudden i'm seeing definition in his stomach and and yeah, mike yeah. was a pretty pretty competitive hockey player in his youth and and i'm looking yeah. and I'm going, man you, you look great and uh i said what's it about and he said and that's how it started that's how it started he said shakes and okay feet. so we got that that's a lot that's that's a, yeah. that was a lot. I'm trying. I'm trying to try. I'm going back. I'm like brrr, tracking this whole life. Okay, so when you're saying you told the story of when you were working for the railroad at that point in time, what is that the time in life where you felt the most fit? Is that what I was kind of hearing from you? Is that like you were describing yeah. like a time where you know? You, I mean that that is hard work. Like I don't know if anybody understands. That's not that's grinding hard work every was, day physical labor i was i was uh i was probably not in the best shape of my life but i tell you what uh i i, I would have been a handful to tangle with yeah. you know that's funny I, I, I Dude, was, your answer your answer was classic to the strength test let's wrestle <laughs> yeah i mean i grew up wrestling and i'm like yeah it's like <laughs> i just i just yeah it just so th there's me. um you know it's funny. It's funny you said that. There's a there's a there is a big difference, Tim, in in gym strength and functional fitness strength, everyday movement and activity, which I think there's a place and they're both very, very important. But so take me back. I mean, what was like what was childhood like? What what was happening before all that, if you don't mind? Like, I mean, how were you active growing up? Did you play sports? Um, I mean, what's kind of what's your passion? So I I uh I was always kind of a runt. I was you know, they called me Tiny Tim or Short Ribs or Squirt or whatever. I, I wrestled from the time I was five till I graduated high school. I played baseball, um, played football in high school. I was I was tiny. I mean, I as a freshman in yeah. high school, I wrestled 98 pounds. I never had to cut weight. You know, and if anybody knows anything about boxing, wrestling, 
combat type sure. sports, it's based on, it's based on weight. And so that's a, one of those things that at a young age, weight was a very important factor in my life because I was not cutting weight to mm. wrestle some of these lowest classes. And I'd be wrestling guys that they're walking around weight was 20 pounds heavier than what they were wrestling. And they'd cut hard and come down. And, and I was a late bloomer. Um, you know, when I was, when mm. I was young, I was very competitive and then everybody else just grew. And mm -hmm. here I am, I'm, I'm still just a little kid. You know, these guys are shaving yeah. and I'm like, you know, I, I look like I should still be on the playground and, and it took a long yeah. time for me to catch up to them. Um, I was, I was, did that bother I, you at all at the time? Uh, that, I, like, I would have liked to, I would have liked to have been more competitive. And I, I never, I didn't like the fact that everybody grew up faster than me. I was always one of the two smallest guys in my class. It was, it wasn't a huge school, you know, small Montana school, but it, it, I didn't like being the smallest. And, and there was a lot of times in my life where, you know, somebody thought that they were going to pick on the small guy and they got, they got a, they got a fight on their hands. And, um, that's just kind of the way I grew up. Uh, I'm the youngest of three brothers and uh we were always fighting either with each other or other people mm. or whatever and that's just how we handled things we we were yeah. we were fighters and um and so when i was really young i was skinny and i actually grew up my parents and grandparents owned a bar restaurant and dinner theater all in this one building oh cool and about the time i was in fourth grade so i'd get home from school I get off the bus after about 45 minutes on the bus because we lived, we were the last stop way out in the country. Yeah. And um, I'd go into the bar and I'd grab a, a soda and I'd grab a candy bar out of the cooler and I'd grab a beef jerky stick or a bag of chips or something. And that yeah. was my daily routine. And so right there, I just got into this bad habit of, hey, gotcha. I, I like these snacks. I'm going to eat these snacks. Yeah. And I kind of got this little paunch and I never... I was never, even when I was in the best shape of my life, I still always had a little bit of a belly and I've, I, I've never had abs, you yeah. know? And that's one of those things where I'm, lo I'm looking at all these other guys and I'm looking at me going, I can get there. I can do that. And I can do yeah. that before I hit 50, you know? And, yeah. um, so I, I, didn't, I believe I didn't you like can. Being small. I believe you can. I didn't like being, yeah, I didn't like being small. And so when I did finally grow and then I actually put on weight, it didn't bother me that I put on weight because, I kind of felt like I'm not the little guy anymore, you mm -hmm. know. I was actually mm -hmm. kind of one of the bigger guys when I finally mm -hmm. grew, but I wasn't, yeah. you know, I wasn't yeah. formidable by any stretch. But yeah, yeah I just yeah. so I was really active in sports, and um, and then I actually when I was a when I was a between my junior and senior year in high school, we have a thing here called Boys State. I'm sure they have it in other states, and it's like a it's like a mock political thing and and i got nominated to go and i went and and it really was my thing and i kind of i i probably let a lot of people down because i went and i i i didn't go to some of the seminars and stuff i was in the sub is the first time i'd ever been on a college campus yeah i was in the sub playing video games because i was like this is cool there's video games on the college yeah, campus. yeah yeah and so i got drugged into this seminar and there's a marine corps officer on stage talking about the united states marine corps along with other other recruiters from other branches and i just thought i'm gonna go do that and uh so i joined the marine corps uh went in on a buddy program with a friend of mine two days after we graduated high school he got married and then pulled out his you know recruitment i went and i was about four weeks from graduation and i was at uh Camp Pendleton in Southern California, mm -hmm. and we were at uh, morning PT, and I was a squad leader. Um, in fact, that week they were they were talking that they were going to put me in as the the guide, which is the um, mm -hmm. platoon leader. And um, I was standing at PT and in uh, at parade rest, and all of a sudden I just tipped over and blacked out. And they sent mm -hmm. me to Balboa Naval Hospital, and they had me breathe under a spirometer, and they said you have a slight case of asthma, and you're going to go home. And they said, did you know you had asthma before? I said, well, I've always had this respiratory thing that comes and goes in the spring and the fall. And I always yeah. just assumed that it was allergy because I've always sure. had hay fever. And they said, no, you have asthma, you're going home. And that's probably when I was obviously in the fittest shape of my life because you don't go through the, you know, yeah, yeah. Marine Corps basic training without being pretty fit. But right. came back, went to work. I've never, I never, I never went to college. I've just kind of been a guy that, 
I don't know. I, I, I get into jobs and I like them and I just do them. And, mm-hmm. and uh, I saw both my brothers party their way into college and party their way out with a huge mm-hmm. load of debt. And I knew that yeah. I would do the same thing. If I followed, if I went to college, I'd have done the same thing. So for me, it was a, a financial decision to say, hey, you know, I'm not going to put myself in a bunch of debt to um, to fail. And yeah. um, I, I, I've always been self-deprecating. And so I just kind of felt like, yeah, I'm not even going to be able to, I'm not even going to try to do that because I don't, I don't want to fail at it. Mm. And um, so fast forward through 10 years, I, I, I just get hired on with the railroad. I meet my wife a week before I leave for orientation in Nebraska. She lives in Billings. I'd never met her before. Mm-hmm. We go out on a date. We go out. I think we go out on two dates, maybe before I leave. Yeah. And then I leave town, and uh, <laughs> all of a sudden now I have a reason to be in Billings, Montana. Because before I was like, well, I wouldn't mind traveling and seeing the sure. country, and you know, I I own a house in Billings, but you know, I have roommates, and I was the other through my twenties. Through my teens and twenties, I partied a lot. I partied pretty mm-hmm. hard. You know, that was it, there was a I drank. I if you know if I could have ten percent of the money I put across the bar to come back, I'd be a wealthy man. You know, but okay. <laughs> uh, so so I drank a lot of alcohol and and so met my wife. I move away, and then now I want nothing more than to get back to Billings because mm-hmm. I knew right away with my wife that she was the one that I was going to be with the rest of my life, and. Um, so I, I get a transfer, I come back to Billings. I'm able to, to get back within about two months and um, we get married about a year after we met and um, we, we get pregnant with our first born mm-hmm. shortly, like probably within a week of our marriage. Yeah. And life is good, you know, we're, we're doing good. Um, and then it kind of comes into away. like now because that story that you shared before was your son at six months, right? Yeah. So that was that was yeah. So now ago. that's kind of like the backstory of like who Tim is, where you came from, what life was like, ups, downs, roller coasters. You know, right. thank you for for signing up. I'm sorry that that happened, but thank you for even doing that. That you know what I mean. It takes cojones right. just to just to sign and go. Uh, unfortunately, you know, sometimes shit happens, obviously. So right. you get into right. all of that, your son, then you obviously have this realization. You decide you don't want to be traveling and from home. And right. now you get into obviously your thing. You share with me um, something, you know, that I want to, that I want to get into too. Um, you know, a lot of people, Tim, have things, right? Like we have our stuff from the past. Um, You know, people let that obviously carry over with them and, you know, it builds up and, you know, you shared with me um, one of your big whys that I want to dive into is obviously this dad camp um, that you share with me. You know, you have three kids, Um, you know, I know you talked about your son, but you got three kids, you have your wife that you share with me Um, and your main mission is to be the most involved person that you can possibly be, right? But you told me you got to a point where your hips were hurt and your knees were hurting, your mental focus was was off because you used to remember things all the time and you couldn't remember them as as sharply anymore. Um, And then, I mean, did you, you know, you said you started when? When did you see your friend, Mike? Uh, I because my he posted it in September and we started uh, October first was our first trip. Okay. That I that I so at that point when you saw that unpack that for me. Cause I think a lot of people are in this position, right? Like they get to, they have this, this stuff, whatever it may be their, their journey, right. They get right. to this point. Uh, and this is where everybody starts in, in why they come to ER shred for you. What was it like at that moment? Like what, what was happening to make you say, okay, enough was enough. Well, I, I, so I participated in two dad camps with my son and my younger daughter my son is Mm -hmm. nine my younger or i'm sorry my son is 11 my younger daughter's nine and then my oldest daughter's 13 so she was too old because it was for elementary kids only okay so she actually went with me to go participate as a volunteer okay and i thought i thought volunteering i would not be as tired because those weekends at that dad camp they're just they wipe you out emotionally and physically yeah and and mentally because you're just 
you're pouring so much into your kids and you're just taking in so much you're learning so much about yourself and, and gaining all these tools on how to be the best dad you can and how to be the faith leader of your family. Mm-hmm. Spiritually, you're you're on the highest high. Mm-hmm. But everything else, you're wrecked. I mean, you get home Sunday night and you're just wiped out. And um, yeah. my daughter, we were driving home from serving together there. And I look over at her and she's just got these huge rollers coming down her cheeks. And I said, honey, are you okay? And my daughter, my oldest, she is just such a sweetheart. She is, she wears her heart on her sleeve and, and she, I worry about her so much in the world because she just thinks the best of everybody. Sure. But it, but it's one of those things where because she's like that, everything works out for her because she just is the best and she's Mm. crying. And I'm just like, what is wrong? And she says, dad, I just miss it so much already. And we were 10 miles down the road. Mm. And she said, she said one of her friends had talked about her happy place. And she said, I never understood what she meant before. And now I know dad camp, being up there and helping those kids so that those dads can work on themselves. That's my happy place. Mm. I was just so proud. I was yeah. so proud that I've, I've got this, I've got this young lady that she's got such a servant's heart and, and I can influence that. And I can, I can. I can help develop that. And Mm -hmm. as a dad who's participated in dad camp, I just feel like I'm a very skeptical person. And um, honest honest to God, I don't know where everybody's at in their relationship with God, but God spoke to me when I was in the mountains. And I was working a second job at that time. And I had had been at church and had a service. And um, I thought that what the pastor was talking about was that I needed to quit working that second job so I could be there for the small things with my children. Mm-hmm. Just the, the analogy was you'll be in the same house with your father. You may not be in the same room, but just knowing that he's there is comforting. And just knowing mm-hmm. that if you need him and you ask for him, he's just in the other room. And I'm in the mountains and, and we're at dad camp and it was like a sledgehammer upside the head. It was just boom. And it was like, God would just grab me by the ear and said, hey, dummy, I told you once before, you don't need that second job. So I came home and I told my wife, I said, I, this has never happened to me before. I've always been kind of a skeptic. And I said, I, I think I need to quit that job so I can be more yeah. involved. And um, I, so we made this plan. We, we do a budget. We do a $0 budget every month. We made this plan to... Um, how we were going to budget for it, how our uh, how our income was going to be affected. Within two weeks, she got a promotion at work. She works at the church that we work at, and she went from being like a part time assistant to yeah, being much more involved. Her raise more than made up for what I was going to lose in income, and it was a sporting goods store that I worked at, so hockey gear, school yeah. clothes, stuff like that. We got at a very good discount. Yeah. It also made up for all of that. So it was one of those things where it's like, obviously God spoke, we trusted him, we listened. He's blessing us now. You know, we just need to trust him. And yeah. I, like I said, I, I'm, I'm really a hard sell. And um, I want everybody to be able to experience something like that. Yeah. And it was, it was, I, it, it was, it changed my life. I came home, my wife said, what did you guys do there? Because you need to go back because <laughs> I've never seen you. I've never seen you this way with the kids. Yeah. And um, it's just, it's, it's, and the thing of it is, it's, it's called dad camp and it's not just a camp. It's a whole ministry. It's the, it's the whole idea of, you know, men need to be the men of their families they need to have they need to be the leaders of the family they need to be strong they need to be comforting they need to show their children how to be good men yeah and um and it's i just think it's a really important message because i think fatherlessness in in the entire world i think i've heard a a, um statistic that said like 93 percent of all ailments you know addiction yeah um sex problems, you know, uh, uh, gambling, alcohol, 
violence can be attributed back to a, a home that doesn't have a strong father figure. Sure. And 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 I think and I came from a home where my dad traveled for work and he was an alcoholic and and I never I never occurred to me that my dad wasn't the strong dad. Mm. But he he did the best he could. He wasn't equipped. And it, yeah. and I think to myself, I got some good traits from him and now I want to help other men get it equipped. I love that's, that. That's, that's a pretty that's solid why. Okay. So you have this you have this realization for yourself and then you, that just shows how good of a dude you are. You have this realization of yourself where it impacts your life and you want to turn around and instantly serve other people, which is, which is amazing. Um, yeah. So you have this awakening, Tim, and then let's get into the health side of things, right? Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. So we're like, did you feel that like when you saw your friend and you said, okay, I really need to get my health back. Like stuff is, stuff is not right. What emotions were you going through when your daughter said that and you had this realization with the job and such? Like, I'm, I'm, that's awesome that it all turned out. Like, but where did that spark come from? Where it's like, I got to radically shift my, my health too. Well, I, I can only speak for myself, but I would, I would venture to say there's a lot of other people out there who get into the position that I'm in. You, you get to feel a lot of shame about where you've let mm. yourself get. And, mm. um, it's one of those things where you you just almost feel like, man, I'm I'm embarrassed for the way that I feel. I'm embarrassed for the way that I look. I'm embarrassed for the condition that my body has gotten into, because I have I wasn't always like this, and I've made a lot of bad choices to get there. And then those bad choices just lead to more bad choices because I'm stressed out and I eat junk and I'm tired, so I drink caffeine. I drink these energy drinks. I drink the soda, and um, it's just it's like this snowball effect. And, and like I said, I'm a hard sell. And I asked Mike, I was like, what is it? And he told me, and, and I knew that they had been, I knew that Mike and Jamie had been involved in isogenics and, and I like it. I'm, I'm a skeptic. And I, I'm one of those people that are like, yeah, it's a, a diet program. It's they're selling stuff, but I trust him and I trust Jamie yeah. because I have a relationship with him and I'm like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to try it. Mm -hmm. And, um, I'm not kidding you, man. The the first cleanse days, my whole body was tingling. Mm -hmm. My brain was on fire. My body was yeah. tingling. My brain was firing on all cylinders. I felt great. I wasn't hungry. I, I couldn't believe it. My knees weren't hurting. When I went to bed, my hips weren't hurting. My back wasn't hurting. And I just, I felt like a million bucks. I mean, I felt... I felt like I was on top of the world. And I mean, right then and there, I was like, I'm, this is, this is legit. This is, this is something that, you know, I don't care if I'm buying product. I don't care what I got to do. This feels awesome. And once I started getting into it, I started realizing, okay. Cause Mike kept telling me, he's like, what you're spending on food, you're just supplementing. And I'm thinking to myself, there's no way it's going to cost me way more. It's going to cost me way yeah. more. It's not. And that's, yeah. that's a hard thing for me to, to convey to people is that when you are putting so much better things into your body, you're not eating the other crap all day long yeah. and you're, you're just, so you don't need the, you know, if I went yeah. to a drive through instead of getting the cheeseburger and the chicken sandwich and the large fries and the large drink, God, I could probably, I could, you know, you don't need all that. You use you, your shakes. And for snacks, I just usually do like some bacon or a hard boiled right. egg, you know, because I just, I guess it's one of those things where I really love how it's purposefully vague. It's not this strict regimen. It's like, hey, here's the guides. This is what, this is what we, bare minimum, what we want you to do. And I'm going to do that. But you know what? If I'm, if I'm starving, it's a heck of a lot better if I go get a hard boiled egg than a candy bar. You know, and 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 in, in the past it would have been a candy bar, mm -hmm. or a pack of donuts, or you know whatever. And it's just the mindset of the mindset of the food that you're using. Is it fueling you? Is it beneficial, or is it just a filler? And and so I, you know, it's it, you do you mm -hmm. don't spend. You I think I'm actually spending less and eating better quality things. I mean, I've eaten more steak and good yeah solid meat meals for dinner than i have in a long time and and it's awesome
I love it. But it, yeah. yeah, so we do that. I'm trend. sorry. I'm hey Tim. I'm I'm sorry that um, I'm sorry that we've designed it that way. That you have to um, torture yourself with yeah. grass yeah. fed, grass finished ribeyes smothered in melting butter um, that just yeah. tastes so delicious. So hey, listen, man. I have a I have a I have a tougher question. Um, okay. Do you mind if I ask it to you? Whatever, man. Okay. Um, you talked about shame. And, yeah. you know, you gave me this story how you were traveling home from dad camp and your daughter, you know, talked to you. Um, and then you have this realization. Was there um, was there shame in there from a dad point of view? Like, did you not feel that you could give everything that you've had this realization to give at that point in time? Because I, I, I feel like there's like this. There's something that ignited this fire because, dude, you gave up all the sweets, you gave up all the soda, you gave up all the candy bars. Like, I remember that Wednesday call and you gave up everything. And I was like, what? Like, that's like crazy because you were eating a significant amount of that stuff. Um, yeah. And I mean, you've lost a ridiculous amount of weight to this point and I've stuck to this. So uh, I'm just curious um, if you don't mind answering that. Like, is, did you have that yeah. feeling? Absolutely. I, I felt like I was letting my children down as their dad, because when my youngest and I went, I couldn't ride the zip line with them because I exceeded their weight limit. Um, two years ago, I'd gone to the, the fair that comes here every summer, and my daughter wanted me to ride one of those rides with her. And the guy is literally pushing on the harness. It's a, it's a mechanical rigid harness, and he's pushing on it as hard as he can. And it's pushing into my chest and my belly and he can't get it to latch. And I can't ride this ride with my daughter because I'm too fat. Mm -hmm. And, and it's one of those things where I had never, I was so unconcerned about my health, but I started seeing, I'm really letting my kids down because they want me, mm -hmm. they want me involved in this stuff. And if I can't be involved, well, what's the difference if I'm on the road or I'm at home, if I can't be involved. You know, so I want to be involved yeah. in every aspect. And that it was it was a mm. um, it was a it was a devastating devastating realization that, you know, I was really letting them down because I wasn't I wasn't providing a good role model for them and I wasn't mm -hmm. I wasn't able to participate with them. And I look at all the years that I've lost and um, I'm gonna make up for them. And it's kind of funny because my wife one of the things that they they do at the church is they 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 have studies and stuff on relationships because they want they want people to have strong relationships married couples everything else mm -hmm. and when yeah. i told her i wanted to do this she was she actually got a little concerned at first because mm -hmm. she she says can i ask you why she says because it's not that i we i mean we've We've always had complete trust. I'm working on the road thousands of miles away from home and, you know, mm -hmm. I shouldn't say thousands, hundreds of miles away from home for yeah. weeks on end, you know, so it was, it was, there was never a trust thing, but she was worried that, because one of the, one of the key indicators that a relationship is breaking down is that one person starts making significant changes in their life, especially their health. And I said, oh no, I said, I, it's not that at all. I said, I want mm. to be able to I want to be able to lead my children and lead these other men into dad camp. I want to make a difference in these people's lives and I want yeah. to be able to do it at the best of my ability. So it was comforting for her, but it was, it was a, you know, I hadn't considered that point of view, but she was, she, she was a little concerned, but you know, we put that to bed very early, but yeah, it's uh, it was just, you know, years and years of uh, just kind of, laughing it off or burying it by eating more junk or drinking more junk mm. or whatever that uh i just kind of came to the realization man I, I i can't do this in the shape that i'm in yeah so it's got change yeah thank you for sharing that i think it's yeah. you know as as men it's definitely not talked about enough and it's it's a huge issue we have feelings too um you know and and i think those are kind of usually swept under the rug for being the guy, the caregiver, yeah. the leader of the household, the, the person that's supposed to, you know, we have all these things and, and it's like, 
where did all that come from? Right. In the first place, but yeah. to have that, um, you know, to have radical change. Right. And I mean, there, there's radical, there's, there's like, I'm talking sprint, sprint pace, which is where you're at. Um, you know, there's gradual, there's in the middle. Um, and it sounds like you've been through all of that, you know what I mean? Along that way, but then you've had this realization, I think, you know, um, one, thank you for sharing that because I think there's so many people that are out there that that are there. I do agree with you on that. Um, we've witnessed it. We see it. I mean, unless you're walking around with your eyes closed, there's people on fire all over the place in a in a figurative, you know, type of thing, and they're just yeah. hurting, um, you know. And I think everybody obviously, you know, does that. But to have that that strong why, I think, is the biggest thing um, that can show you know, that, that you lock on to something and figure out a deeper meaning than the superficial stuff of, Hey, I just need to lose weight or, Hey, you know, like, okay, right. great. Like why, you know? And when you have that thing, cause not every day is peachy hunky dory, right, Tim? Right. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. A, you know, the world will kick you in the ass all day long and then <laughs> wake you up and do it again the next day. And so yeah. you, got, you like, gotta be ready for the fight. You got to be ready. And there's ups and there's downs and there's lefts and there's rights. And I think every journey worth something, um, would you agree, has to has to have some sort of struggle. And I think people got to stop shying away from that. But that's where that solid why happens. Um, so you, you do your first shred. And, you know, you already talked about by day three, which again, you know, some people experience that some people it takes five, six, seven, eight days, some people it takes 22 days. Like it, it really just depends. That's the crazy part is like every single person's body's different, but we know at the root, everybody just needs rocket fuel, right? Like our, our bodies are designed the same. We just need vitamins, minerals, and nutrients. And you decide to remove all the crap that's not serving you. It's not providing right. energy. It's not getting you closer to being the best dad and serving at dad camp and, and being there for your kids. Um, and you go on this thing, you room, remove all of that. You only put in, obviously, nutrient dense superfood. You're using, you know, third party certified macronutrient balance shakes, which, by the way, what do you think about the taste of those? Because a lot of people are, are kind of sometimes they don't know what it's going to be like. There's a lot of junk out there. What, like, what's your thought? So I had never I'd never had a protein shake before. OK, the first the first day I had I got strawberry the first day I didn't have a blender bottle. I didn't have a blender or anything. <laughs> so I take this water in a cup and I pour it in there and I look around my little office in my control room at my shop and I grab a plastic knife and I stir it up. Yeah. And I'm like, well, that looks terrible. I should have put it in a blender. And I take a drink. I was like, oh, this is going to be rough. This mm -hmm. is going to be rough because mm -hmm. it was the texture was not there. And, and Mike's wife, Jamie, who, you know, she, she yeah asked me she says well do you have a blender bottle or mike asked me i can't i think it was mike he said what do you think i said yeah that shake is tough i said i need to put it in a blender he says do you not have a blender bottle i said no i got home from work there was one on my front porch That's you know so an awesome. isogenics one yeah and yeah. uh and i was like thanks man and uh so from there on it was like it was like awesome i i like the strawberry and at first i was like oh, i'm not gonna like the chocolate because i'm not much of a chocolate guy I get done mixing my chocolate. I, I like it with ice, so it's more like a milkshake. Yeah, yeah. And I'm licking, I'm licking the, the immersion blender off. I feel like I'm having a frosty malt, you know? It's just like, oh, yeah. geez, this is awesome. And yeah. um, the vanilla, I try, I do the vanilla. And then if I start getting a sweet tooth, I take the orange, the orange amp, and I put it in the vanilla, yeah. and it tastes like, tastes like Fruity Pebbles cereal, yeah. which is all sugar. Yeah. But it's like, that's it kind of has that taste. It's like, Man, that really curbs your your sweet tooth, and it's sure. all stuff that's all good, you know, good for us. A little yeah. bit of stevia so, in the amp, or the so. I mean, you're food. you're laughing, you're laughing, you're happy. Uh, you're a guy who's sticking with this. So I'm going to go ahead and assume that, and you're a guy that also, like I said, you know, drank a lot of soda, ate a lot of candy bars, was definitely pounding some of the the processed carbs, the salty snacks, the chips, all that good stuff. You swiped it all out and you replace yep. it with this and you're, you're smiling. Like, so yep. we're not starving people. We're not depriving yep. people. You didn't feel like you were, you know, limited no, I, to your, your intake or anything of that nature. I really, I really thought I was going to struggle and I didn't. The fact that mm. if I got hungry, go have an egg, go have bacon. I love bacon and egg. Yeah. I, mean, I, I could eat, I could eat 
eggs anyway and bacon, I, you know, and uh, when Mike told me, eat bacon or eggs, you know, if you get hungry, go eat. And, and it's just like, <laughs> oh, really? I can, yeah. I can do that. He said, we don't count calories. Yeah. You know, just if you're hungry, eat your body's telling you yeah. you need something. And it was just, it was a revelation. It was, it was the best because I, you know, I, I work, I usually get up five, five thirty. I try to get to work by six. I get out of there about two, start running kids in the afternoon, you know, get home. I usually don't have lunch until three or four in the afternoon because I'm trying to get all my work done at work and then get out of there so mm -hmm. I can help my wife out. Mm -hmm. You know, she takes care of the mornings. I take care of the afternoons. And then the evenings we kind of divide and conquer. And, and uh, mm -hmm. because our kids are in a lot of stuff, we got hockey, we got basketball, we got drums, we yeah. got, you know, we just everything under the sun. And um, mm -hmm. so then there's other, you know, so there's times I don't eat lunch till late, but you know, I need something to sustain me through the day. So I'll have two hard boiled eggs or I'll have some bacon or something like that. And it's just amazing how that little bit will sustain you. I mean, I watched that, I watched that fat fiction documentary and I, it just made so much sense to me. It's like, yeah, I mean, I look at my, my grandparents and their parents and, you know, old, the older generation, they weren't eating all this low fat junk. They were eating bacon and eggs and, you know, beef whenever they could. And, you know, look back through history, the beef eaters, why were they called the beef eaters? Well, they were the guards at the London Tower. They were the, they needed them to be the strongest guys. That's why they got beef and the peasants didn't. You know, that's why they were <laughs> some of the biggest, strongest guys. And and so yeah. it's uh it's just, you know, we I think we try to outthink ourselves, you know. We we've we've gone we've gone a long way in history and, and humans humans have thrived on a lot of stuff and and we're yeah. not thriving now because we're we're relying on industrial process garbage. Yeah. And, now, but did you always feel awesome. like that? Or is that how you feel more now? Now that you kind of had a realization of like, hey, maybe food is this like powerful, you know, this powerful. I'm struggling tonight with technology over here. Um, you know, <laughs> my, my, my light's falling on me. My computer stand is going and I'm just trying to figure it out as we go. But like, you know, did you always because. I mean, how was the days before, like when you were snacking on soda and chips and stuff, did you feel a sustain? I mean, because I think a lot of no. people struggle with this. So I'm trying to dive in a little bit to be like, okay, yeah. the people are like, how the hell did this guy do this? Like, this doesn't even make yeah. sense. Like you went from like all of this junk to, yeah. I mean, that, that messes a lot with the insides to all of a sudden you're, you're using, you know, meat and steak and butter and, you know, all of this. And, oh my gosh, you lost you know, 64 pounds and you forgot the inches, but we know it's well over 20. Um, you know, it's probably way more than that because you forgot to measure in the beginning. And it's like, that's ridiculous in that time frame. And it seems like you have no, do you have any cravings at all anymore? Do you like crave the stuff that you used to crave or? Sometimes, you know, like uh, over Christmas, I had a cookie or two, you know, it's just one of those things. My wife made some cookies. I tried a cookie or two and it just, they just didn't hit the same. You know, it's like, yeah. oh, that was, that was not worth it. Yeah. <laughs> you know? it, it was, and before, I mean, was, like in past Christmases, like what, what would be the, what would be oh, the, I'd, I'd have had, I'd have had six cookies and a four, four caramels and, you know, a couple of sodas. And I mean, yeah. I just, I would have loaded up, but yeah, I had, I had like one or two cookies and it's just, it did just, it doesn't even taste the same. I actually grabbed a soda out of my in-laws uh, refrigerator just out of habit i went to the fridge yeah. and instead of grabbing an iced tea which i had been doing all day i grabbed a soda and it was a diet soda and i took a drink and i couldn't i took a second drink and i thought this is awful and i yeah. poured it out the carbonation was horrible and the taste even though it was a diet soda it tasted ridiculously sweet and i couldn't i couldn't even finish it and it this was, was it remarkable was, um, to me because i mean you know people share with me all the time they're like i'm i can't live a day without my diet coke I can't yeah. live a day without my fill in the blank. You know what I mean? Like I hear this yeah. all the time. And did you, I mean, did you have those feelings too in the past? Were you, were yeah. you that person oh, all the time? And then all of a sudden to, just, to, you have this realization, six, you have this why and boom. Yeah. Four to six energy drinks a day on top of probably four to six Dr. Peppers a day, you know, and those were, those were the, the full sugar ones because, you know, as badly as I was treating my body, I was like, well, that aspartame, that's terrible stuff. That's going to kill me. 
you know, right. but I'm putting all this other junk in there too. And so it was, you know, I guess it was, uh, you know, you pick your poison type of thing. Mm. And uh, it's, it's uh, yeah, it, I just find your story. So remark. I mean, to have somebody flash and come back to life like that fast and like make this radical shift. Um, yeah, man, there is definitely something going on inside you for sure. Uh, you know, with that extra, that extra help. And, you know, I mean, I'm just so excited for you. Uh, I'm sure you, what, what's your wife think? She's, she's happy for me. She, um, yeah. she was concerned about the high fat content. Yeah. Um, her mom is a, has been a nurse for over 30 years. Okay. Uh, almost 40 years probably. And so, mm -hmm. you know, there's that, there's that, uh, stigma of high fat that mm -hmm. you know has been beat into society yeah. and um it's hard they were worried about your heart and, your blood pressure yeah. your cholesterol all that change good for stuff. one person is hard and change for a whole society is dang near impossible mm -hmm. you know but uh it happens but um so this is this is what i'm proud of stuff i'm gonna i'm gonna read just some numbers here because she was yeah you just you just had uh so you're gonna read us numbers you share with me at the very end of our chat um you just had your physical, right? Your yearly physical. Yep. Okay. Yep. And so I before my... you do that, before you yeah. do that, before you do that, uh, I just want everybody to know this is Tim's story. Um, you cannot come to the ER shed and we cannot treat you, cure you, prevent you uh, from any disease. We can't, you know, become your medical doctor. We can't, we are not going to, we cannot give you medical advice. Um, we are just going to show you uh, basically what Tim has just shared, you know, uh, we're going to, we're going to support you. We're going to guide you. We're going to help you. We're going to, we're going to guide you into knowledge to where then you have the power to make your own decision. We're going to give you those tracks to run on. Um, but just make sure, you know, you, we don't treat you and cure you or prevent you. So, uh, I just need to make sure I said that Tim, because this right. is your story. Uh, right. all results are not typical, even though we've seen quite a few, uh, ridiculous, um, you know, stories, you know, real life people sharing real mm -hmm. life results. Uh, and we can't deny that, but it's not right. the ER shred that does it. It's you guys that take control of your life. Um, we're just showing you what foods are, are fueling you and what foods are not fueling you is really at the end of the day that, and then kind of guiding along. So with that, you just had your, your physical go, go ahead, share with us why you're so excited. Well, uh, just a testament to how resilient the human body is and how well designed we were for by, sure by god so for sure um i get blood work done every year my wife has always been an advocate for that yep. um my electrolytes my my kidney function is on point they said that my kidneys are functioning as well as anybody my age and better which to me is astonishing considering how much alcohol i used to drink in my life which i'd very seldomly drink alcohol anymore. And that's, that was more of a mm -hmm. change for just socially for me. Um, my lipid panel. So my cholesterol, uh, April of April 30th of 21, my total cholesterol was 235, uh, units, whatever that, whatever mm -hmm. they measure that in, mm -hmm. uh, January 13th of this year, 173. Um, my, my, I'm going to save my triglycerides for last. Yeah. My uh, HDL, which is, um, I guess, the bad cholesterol, the bad cholesterol, was, um, or I'm sorry, that's the good cholesterol, was 33, and it went down to 27. So I've always run on the low side on the, the good cholesterol. Okay. The, L, the LDL, which is the bad one, was 165 last year. 122 this year wow and then my triglycerides last year were 416 so off the chart they can't even measure that they usually actually they usually calculate the ldl and the and the mm -hmm. triglycerides and they actually measured them on me because they were so high yeah so 416 last year 121 this year that's a 294 point drop in my wow. triglyceride. Um, I had a medical student and my doctor both asked me several times, what are you doing? Mm. And I was very conscientious just to not say I was on a diet. I just said, I cut, 
carbs back drastically. I cut out yeah. sugars. I cut out junk. I'm eating better food. I'm not eating processed food. I'm cooking everything that I eat. Mm -hmm. And I'm fasting. I'm intermittently mm. fasting. Yeah. And I said, and so they they were astonished. They were they they were like, whatever you're doing, keep doing it. If we could get all of our patients to do what you're doing, we'd be out of a job. Right. You know, um, they just they were shocked. Yeah. They, they were like, you've lost you've lost 60 pounds. Your your lipid panel has gone into the normal ranges. They they think that 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 good cholesterol that HDL will come actually come up once I continue to lose weight and everything mm -hmm. starts to stabilize. Mm -hmm. Um they were just they were they they said you do you do not see this in a one yeah. year difference. You don't see this from a person and keep it up. You know, they they were just they were dumbfounded. And yeah. it's one of those things where I'm not gonna tell them, well, you know, I'm doing this, I'm doing this program and this and that because I know what's gonna happen. That they're gonna click and they're gonna say, Well, you know, those fad things and this and that. And, no, yeah, yeah. It's not a, not a fad thing. This is stuff yeah. I've been eating my whole life. I like it. It sustains me. This works. Yeah. I've been I've been introducing things back in in between shreds. I haven't found anything that's triggered me yet. And you know, if I do, it's out. You know. Yeah. I I don't eat anything out of the ocean because I'm allergic to shellfish and I'm just so paranoid. <laughs> that I'm <laughs> Himself, so I just I don't eat anything out of the ocean. If I eat fish, it's something that I caught, you know. Yeah. Maybe some walleye no or northern pike. I don't but, eat that uh, much out of the ocean either, anyways, brother. So for me, it's just uh it's steak. Steak, steak, I'm in, and more steak. I'm in beef country. I'll mix a little burger. Country. I'll mix a little burger in there too, but then it's just more steak. So um yeah, it's crazy, man. you know, I um I've been fortunate, Tim, to learn from some really amazing functional medicine doctors and you know, taking more, you know, that's my realm. You know what I mean? Like you have your thing, like mine's more learning about the the human health and the body and how it functions and taking coaching to the next level. And I'll tell you, the more and more I learn from these guys, um, you are a walking billboard of exactly what all these functional medicine doctors preach. Like food's the most powerful legal drug on the face of the planet. Um, you know, once you understand the raw power of it, um, and you, you just give it a chance and you, you give it to the body, which is a living, breathing organism that's designed to function off of vitamins, minerals, and nutrients, not processed carbs and sugars and, and fake chemicals. Um, boom, there you go. You know what I mean? Like the human body, when given a fighting chance, will heal itself. Um, you know, we've, we've just been interrupting its process for so long now in the way that it was designed to function. And it's like, it's pretty crazy, right? It's pretty crazy after well, all those years to kind of realize. I, I guess my thing is, is I don't entirely fault the industrialization of food because we've been able to feed a lot more people in this short span of history, you know, with, with, you know, more efficiently, but we're doing it with the wrong thing, you know? Yeah. And it's all, and it's because of profit. You know, they could do it better and they yeah. could do it healthier and we could be better off, but it's not as profitable. So it's for sure. I, well, I your doctors kind of really, your doctors summed that up for you, right? They told you they'd be out of a job if everybody did what you did. Yep. Hey, um, my phone's about to die. Let me, yeah, let me grab a charger. I'm sorry. I, yeah, I yeah. thought I had it charged up. Give me one second. No, you're good. Hey, Tim, Tim. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, we're 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 literally at the end. Um, you don't okay. even need the charger. We'll, we'll wrap okay. it up. So we'll do it with this. Um, listen, man, I appreciate you coming on. I appreciate your time. Tell your wife, okay. we say thank you for giving us your time. Cause I know you, you occupied her space, uh, for her workout. So tell her, thank you. Um, I'm going to get to mine too, before she kills me today and, and take the baby. Um, but listen, man, we appreciate you. Uh, I'm so glad um, that you found this, you know, the universe works in mysterious ways. And I'm just so thankful that you and, and your friend posted and you were open enough to do it. And now, you know, you're in a place now, Tim, where not only have you become your own hero, 
but you're now being the superhero to so many other people by hopefully, you know, whether it's somebody that's just listening and they could relate to your story and now you give them a little more relief or the people that you've, you know, shared with already that have possibly helped. Like, so we're thankful for you. Uh, and I just, I can't wait to keep celebrating, you know, you crushing your goals. Cause I know I just got this feeling in my gut that you got, you know, you're not stopping anytime soon. I mean, you're more fired up now than ever before. Well, I thank you guys because, you know, I, you, you've, you've got this jigsaw puzzle and you've, you know, maybe it's not the whole puzzle yet, but you, we can start to see what the picture is, right? Yeah, right. Now it's up to us. It's up to us to start putting our own pieces in to figure out what we need. And, um, sure. and if I can do this, if I can do this, anybody out there can do this because I, love it. I was totally, I love it. totally addicted. To all Definitely that an stuff. inspiration for sure. Well, thank you yeah. very much. I really appreciate it. Yeah, man, I, I appreciate you. So listen, guys, every single Tuesday, 8 p.m. tomorrow, we have our Shred Your Testimonial call. Uh, this is where I met Tim. Uh, pretty crazy call, right, Tim? Like the, the stories yeah. in, on the Wednesday night are just, whoa. Like you need a little more inspiration. You want to say, oh, you know, if you go say, I'm older, I'm this, I'm that, whatever. Nope, we have every walk of life. Like, come in, check it out, www.ershredders.com to come into our community for free. Uh, tomorrow night's call is 8 o'clock, and then we have another Thursday call with our other ER Shred ambassador, Mr. Bob Sivright, and that is more about sharing the shred because once we come alive, once we understand what Tim has just shared with us, it's almost selfish, right, Tim, not to share this yeah. with other people because everybody deserves to feel this epically awesome every day don't they i struggle with trying to not be pushy with people that i know could benefit so much because you feel so wanna, good I now because i feel so good and i don't want to be i don't want to be uh presumptuous and say hey man yeah you got to come do this with me because i yeah i'm i'm furthest from the person to tell somebody what they should and shouldn't do for sure but i i know i have a lot of friends and a lot of guys and they're like what are you doing and i tell them and they're like, yeah. yeah well well and it's just like no yeah, you got to You got to tell you, you, I'll tell you what, me. brother, the only thing you got to do is keep doing what you're doing. Um, more importantly, you got you back. You're you're getting to be that position where you can be that, you know, you can you can uh, be involved with your kids the way that you want to. It's only going to keep getting better and better. I promise you, brother, they might not say something. They might not act, but they're watching. And if you just yeah. keep crushing you're going to probably get your wish at the end and, and you're doing it the right way because you're right. Until somebody's ready like you, um, all you can do is just share information and show and that's it. That's all we can really do. So that's what we do here is we share the right information. You guys choose what you want to do. And what, you know, if you choose, if you choose to do it, then there we go. Right. So that's that. All right, guys, listen, we appreciate you. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Uh, like I said, every single Tuesday night, 8 PM Eastern come into our group. We hope to see you there. We'll catch you next time. Bye-bye. Thanks, Tim. See you guys.